For my React application preloaders, I love to animate SVGs. So it's very common for a React application to show a blank white screen while it's being loaded for the first time. This is mainly because React being a JavaScript library, it could take some time for those JavaScript chunk files to get loaded. And while this is happening, the browser just shows a blank screen. So here is how the finished animation looks like. So let's get started. The first step is to get the SVG code of the logo or text that you want to animate. So the way to do this might be similar in other software, but since I'm using Figma, this is basically how you do it in Figma. So you group the logo or the text, you right click on it and then choose outline stroke. So this will create an outline around uh, the shape. There might not be any visible changes, so I would add a stroke color and increase the width a bit. So just to make the outline more pronounced, I will remove the fill color, but will easily add this uh, back uh, when I need it. And then I'll right click on the shape and copy the SVG code. And head over to VS Code for the animation. So in VS Code, I'll create three files, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript file. In the HTML is where I'll paste the SVG code CSS is when we do the styling and the JavaScript, it's going to be used just to get a particular value and it won't be used anymore. So when you paste the SVG code in the HTML, you should be able to see the path. Now since this logo has three distinct uh, shapes, I can see three distinct paths that make up each shape. And this is exactly how I wanted it to be, so I can animate individual shapes. So I head over to my CSS and I'll add some reset styles and I'll just centralize the logo and since the logo is white, I'll just uh, change the background color of the body of the HTML so that I can see the logo. So I'll add an ID to the XVG. Uh, we can use the class, the class will work just fine. Uh, but I just added to use the ID. So the ID is just a way for us to style the individual path. And you notice I didn't bother to put an ID for the path because we can use the end child property to get the individual path. So the first, first path or the first shape will be the end child number one. And basically there are two things that we're going to be tweaking, which is the stroke dash array and the stroke dash offset. So the stroke dash array is simply uh, an attribute that defines the patterns of dashes and gaps in the outline of a shape. So based on what the measurement you used, you can see the dashes and the gap. So basically what we want is this outline is going to start uh, like being empty and draw itself in. So the gap we want is going to be as large as the length of the, the outline of the shape. So since I can't, or oh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to just guess the length of the shape, we're going to uh, use a property where we can get the length of the shape. So to do that for all the shape, I'll just use the JavaScript file. I'll make a reference to the SVG using the query selector, getting the path, and then I'm going to look through all the path, and then I'm going to uh, console log the total length using the get total length property. So this should output the total length of each path, and then we're going to just uh, copy that somewhere and use that subsequently. So for the stroke dash array and the stroke dash offset, we're going to be using the length of each path. And what that would do is it will make it seem like the the outline is not uh, is not visible anymore. The reason is because the the gap in the SVG outline is now as long as its length, so it's going to be invisible. And also the offset is going to be as long as its length. So basically, the animation will be uh, animating the dash and the offset from zero position and animating it all the way to the length. So we're going to do same for the other shapes and using the total length for the dash array and the dash offsets. So we're going to go over to the animation using keyframes. 
So you set up your keyframe and uh, you can use any name you like. So while using keyframes as animations, you can add keyframes from zero to hundred percent. Because we are going to make this animation to loop indefinitely, I'm going to start my keyframes and end them a little bit off zero and uh, hundred. So I'm going to start at 10. I'm ending it at uh, 90. So we have a little bit of time for it to uh, pause in between the loops. So at 10%, we're going to set the dash offset to zero. And at 90%, we're setting the dash offset to the length of the stroke. So we need to link that animation to the shape CSS style and give it a duration, a motion type and a direction, which is going to be forward. So save and preview. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same for the other shapes, making sure to change the names and also the paths total length at keyframe 90 or at keyframe 90%. After changing the dash of sets, make sure to link the animation that were created for the other shapes. I'm going to use the same five seconds for each, just change names, and save and preview what we've done. Okay, they all start at the same time. So just a little uh, modification to tweak the delay between each path. Just add a uh, uh, seconds after the direction and that should tweak the time or the delay between each starts of animation. Okay, good. So the next thing I'll do is to change the stroke color. Make the first one and second one green. This is just uh, a creative uh, decision. And then I'll change the background back to white. So to animate the fill color, we're going to start from transparent. And then we're going to add an intermediate uh, keyframe so that it fills up somewhere at the middle of the, the animation. And then at the end of the animation, we'll uh, push it back to transparent. So you can add, add as much as intermediate uh, keyframes as you like. I'll just add an extra one here just to make the green to fill up quicker. And then we'll add a loop so that it loops indefinitely. And then we'll just go ahead and do the same for the other shapes. Okay, just making sure that the fuel is the same as the color I wanted. So green, green and red. Then we'll also make sure we looped out using the infinite keyword. Now we'll save we can see the animation looks cool. So to move this to our React project, we make a copy of the SVG code, head over to the React project, look for the public folder, and then in the index.html file, we'll paste that SVG code inside the div with the ID of root. So in the same way, we'll copy the styles, and then go to the index.html file, create a style tag, and paste the CSS styles we have. Now I'm going to make some few changes to this style.css. Uh, since we don't want to start the entire body, we're going to change that to just give it a class name. We'll call it middle. I can go ahead and remove the reset styles I initially put. And then we'll create a div with a class of middle. And then we'll take the SVG code and paste inside that div. Now, depending on the project, when you try to preview this, uh, it might not be visible because the pro this particular project has less files, so it loads almost instantly. So what I'll do is I'll use the network uh, console to tweak the throttle so that it loads slowly. And then when we refresh this, you're going to see the loading SVG animation before the React app loads. And that's about that. So if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe as it kind of like acts like an encouragement for me to keep making videos.